Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Welcome to Nine Chaitanya. Hare Krishna. So all the holy places are all here in my Kutam, Nabi Kutam. So Nine Chaitanya. This is the Nine Chaitanya. That other Nine Chaitanya over in Uttar Pradesh. That is the extension, the original Naimasharanga, which is here in the Holy Dharma. The Naimasharanga was here, Lord Balaram came here, I saw Ramaharshan. Ramaharshan was seated on the high seat, Lord Balaram came into the assembly. Ramaharshan had been elected by the sages to speak to them, to answer all their inquiries. And Ramaharshan was sitting there, Lord Balaram entered, and everyone acknowledged Lord Balaram. Everyone either stood up or bowed down or offered some kind of respect, except for Ramaharshan. So Lord Balaram considered his mission, how he is coming to this world. He also considered about the situation of Ramaharshan, that Ramaharshan was not actually uh, the pure Brahmana. He was born in mixed caste. Mother was from Brahmana family, father was from Chastri family. So he considered, he considered Lord Balaram considered that Ramaharshan should be punished. He did not show proper behavior. Because he was seated on the big seat, he was taking the position of Acharya, but he was not behaving like Acharya. He was not showing proper example. So example is very important. Example speaks louder than words. So Lord Balaram, considering the situation, he took a blade of kusa grass and he pierced the heart of Ramaharshan. And in this way, all the sages, all the assembly of great saintly persons who had gathered here in Naimasharanya, they were all very shocked. It was a great shock to all of them because they had elected Ramaharshan as their leader. They had elected Ramaharshan. He was a disciple of Srila Vyasadeva. And they had elected him to be their guide and their, their Acharya. And they'd given, even them, they'd given him a benediction of having a long life. So they expressed their shock to Lord Balaram that you have killed this person, that you know, we gave him the benediction of a long life. So Lord Balaram said to the sages, well, I'll bring him back to life if you want. But they said to Lord Balaram, no, no, you are the supreme personality of Godhead. Your will is supreme. You've ended his life, but we've given him the benediction of a long life. So what can be done about it? You have to keep intact our benediction as well. So then Lord Balaram came to the solution that Ramaharshan has one son, Ugrashrava Sutta. Sutta, we know him as Sutta Goswami, Ugrashrava Sutta. He said, the son is none different from the father. So whatever benediction you'd given to the father, that can come to his son. So let his son have that benediction, that he will have a long life without impairment of old age and disease, and he will be able to speak and guide you. So it happened after Lord Balaram killed Ramaharshan, the son Sutta Goswami took his place and he spoke. And that's who we hear from in the Srimad Bhagavatam, speaking to the sages here in Naimasharanya. Naimasharanya, situated 
at the hub of the universe. Very important holy place. The sages had all come there because they knew Kali Yuga is beginning. And Kali Yuga is the age of irreligion. So they were very worried that Lord Krishna, the personification of all religious principles, was present on the world, but now he has departed from the planet. So in his absence, where are all the religious principles to be found? So the reply was given, Krishna Swadamo Pagate Krishna Swadamo Pagate Dharma Jnana Kalo Nishta Drisham Mesha Kura Narto Dranodrita This Srimad Bhagavatam is as brilliant as the sun. And it has arisen just after the departure of Lord Krishna for his own abode. Persons who have lost their vision due to the dense darkness of this age of Kali will get light from this Purana. So this place, Naimisharanya, for us it is very important because this is where Sutta Goswami was speaking to the sages in Naimisharanya. And those of you who have read the first chapter of Srimad Bhagavatam in the first canto, we see the sages putting questions to Sutta Goswami. And those questions are answered in the course of twelve cantos of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So in the beginning, it's Sutta Goswami speaking to the sages in Naimisharanya. Then later on it becomes Vidura and Maitreya, Vidura speaking to Uddhava, then Uddhava sends him to Maitreya, and you have Vidura and Maitreya speaking, Maitreya speaking to Vidura. And then later on you get Sutta Goswami, he comes more in the 12th canto, again at the end of the Srimad Bhagavatam. So here in Naimasharanya, this is a place of sacrifice. All the sages had come because they knew Kali Yuga is coming, the age of irreligion. People were already irreligious a little bit in the Treta Yuga. In Dwapara Yuga they became more irreligious. But in the Kali Yuga irreligion will come in full force. So much nonsense, so many sinful activities. So the sages were concerned for the welfare of the people and they all gathered here in Naimisharanya and they pre prepared to perform sacrifice. And at the same time they wanted their questions answered. So Sutta Goswami was giving that job. Sutta Goswami was speaking. Now Sutta Goswami what was his qualification to speak? He had heard Srimad Bhagavatam. He had heard it from Sukadev Goswami. Sukadev Goswami had spoken to Maharaj Parikshit. So at that time when Sukadev was speaking to Maharaj Parikshit, other people also gathered there. People like Narada Muni and Srila Dev. So the, the guru, Vyasadeva is the guru of Sukadeva, the father also guru, and Narad is the guru of Vyas, the so guru, Param guru, they're all there, and Sutta Goswami was also there, and he'd heard from Sukadeva Goswami, and he was then given the chance to repeat everything to the sages here in Naimasharanya. So that's little introduction. Naimisharanya, there's a replica of Naimisharanya over there in Uttar Pradesh, not very far away from Ayodhya. You can go there. Sometimes it's called Naimisharanya, but 
In the recent time, they gave it back the original name, Naimasharanya. And you can see also Dadichi Muni's ashram is there in Naimasharanya. Dadichi is told about in Srimad Bhagavatam. Right? When Indra wanted to make a weapon, while Indra was approaching Lord Vishnu to kill Vritasura. But the Lord told Indra, I'm not going to kill him. You kill him yourself. Right? You do your own dirty work. You want me to kill a Brahmana? So anyway, Lord Vishnu told him, he said, anyway, you can get, if you get the, De if you get the Dichi to give up the bones from his body, then you can make a weapon which can kill this demon, Vritasura. So Indra was given that task that he had to go to Dadichi who resides in this Naimasharanya and he requested Dadichi Muni to kindly give me the, can you give me the bones from your body? <laughs> now what do you think if somebody would ask you, my dear Prabhu, <laughs> could you kindly just give me a little charity? <laughs> just the bones of your body. No flesh, just the bone. You can have the flesh. So uh, Dadichi was already rich, rich in renunciation. He was a vairagi. Very, although he was in family life, he had a family, he had people there, but he was not attached. And when the request came from Indra, then Dadichi said to Indra, he wanted to hear some philosophy from him. So he said, don't you know the body is the thing we're most attached to? The Dichi wasn't attached, but he wanted to hear philosophy. So he said like this to Indra, that, you know, the body, that's what we're most attached to, isn't it? <laughs> Usually, yeah. Right? So Indra replied very nicely. He said, uh, you know, it's it's very sometimes it's it's very difficult to give charity, and sometimes it's very difficult to ask for charity. You know, sometimes you get new devotees and you ask them to go out on Sankirtan, and they feel a little shy to sell a book and ask somebody to give a donation. You know, <laughs> do you get devotees like that? Yeah. You ask a devotee, go out, Prabhu, take these books, go out and sell some books. <laughs> what? I have to ask people for money? You know, they don't like that idea, approaching people for money. No, Prabhu, the money's not for you, it's for Krishna. You have to engage the money for the service of Krishna. So sometimes it's not easy to ask people for charity. And sometimes it's not easy to give charity. You know, maybe you've had experience, I've had, when sometimes going for book distribution, you know, the, they go, you go to somebody's house and the woman said, look, I've got five children at home. My husband has no job. I'm supposed to feed the children. You're asking me for money. <laughs> I would like to give you, but how can I give you? I've got five children, my husband has no job. Yeah, difficult sometimes to give charity. Difficult to ask for charity. So Dadichi heard like this from Indra and he thought, yeah, very good, very nice. And he agreed, he gave up his body. Indra got the bones and he made the pressure weapon and he went and killed Vritasura. So, Dadichi, he had a residence here in Naimasharanya. Great sages, they like to live there. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada also established Godiyamak temple there in Naimasharanya. It's a common place, people will go there to do sacrifice. We are here today also to do sacrifice. Yagna Vai Vishnu. Kali Yuga Dham, Harinam Sankirtan. 
कृष्ण शक्ति विनी नहीं थोड़ा प्रवर्तन राइट काली युग धर्मा धर्मा फॉर दिस एज इन संकीर्तन दिस इज द युग धर्मा इन द काली युग इज द ओनली वन यज्ञ देयर इज नो अश्वमेधा गवलंबिया अश्वमेधा गवलंबिया सन्यासा जो सन्यासा काली युगा, राइट? नो सन्यास इन काली युगा एंड नो ऑफरिंग फ्लैश टू द एंसेस्टर्स, जस्ट राइट। महाराज इस आदि, देर सन्यास बट नो माया बादी सन्यास, नो बट आर सन्यास इस अ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ सन्यास फ्रॉम व्हाट्स मेंशन देर Sometimes we see also this statement is coming from a Purana, which is more concerned with the mode of ignorance than the, with the mode of goodness. There are eighteen Puranas, so there are six Puranas for each of the modes. So according to the different Puranas, the different modes of nature are uh, expanded. So in the mode of goodness. There is sannyas, but in the mode of ignorance, people in the mode of passion and ignorance, they're not to take sannyas. You should be firmly situated in the mode of goodness, right? Brahmanas they take sannyas without being a brahmana, and the brahmana means Vaishnava brahman, not a, just a pandit, brahmana pandit. They they cannot take sannyas, Kali Yuga, but Vaishnava Brahmins they can take sannyas, Kali Yuga. And we see Ramanuja Charya, Madhva Charya, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they all took sannyas. So certain sun, certain yagnas are prohibited: offering the cow, offering the horse, begetting a child in the womb of your brother's wife. Offering flesh to the ancestors and Maya body sannyas—they're all prohibited in the Kali Yuga. But Kali Yuga done sankirtan. That is the dharma for the Kali Yuga. So this is why we have come here to Naimisharanya with His Holiness Dhiradhamma Dhir Maharaj, who is leading the ecstatic kirtan, the great yagna for the sacrifice of the Kali Yuga. So in this way, we understand the importance of Naimisharanya. What? Uh-huh. Yes, Ma. Prabhu Srinivas Gopal Prabhu say, anybody doesn't have a set of Srimad Bhagavatam? It's a good place to get a set. Right? So anybody wants to get anybody wants a set of Bhagavatam? You don't have a set. You want to get a set of Bhagavatam? What price? Huh? Nine thousand five hundred rupees. Full set, eighteen volume. They'll mail it to your home. You don't have to carry it with you. They'll send it to your home for you. If you want to get a set. All right. So uh, just just to tell you that what this book Shrimad Bhagavatam very relevant to Naimisharanya. This is where it was initiated. The speaking of the Bhagavatam began there in Naimisharanya. All right, so we're going to have more speakers. We are welcome. His Holiness Prachat Prari Bajak Maharaj. Oh, Bhakti Prachat. Bhakti Prachat Hari Prachat Maharaj. He's been visiting all the other parties. He's come back to us again. So he's gone round. Did you go round all seven parties yesterday? Not yet. 
Just went to the three parties. So we're lucky he's come to see us again today. So we'll ask him to give us speech to the devotee. Okay. Yeah, but this is still good room with yeah? This is much a dream. Oh. Oh, Maharaj said we have entered into Madhya Dweep. So he's going to tell us about Madhya Hare Krishna. <laughs> 